Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about how I shot an entire wedding on the X100V. So yesterday was my brother-in-law's wedding and I was going to go ahead and shoot it with the Canon R5 with a 24-70 lens. I want an all-purpose lens that can just do everything from wides to portraits. The 2.8 will give you a really nice type of field. The R5 is 45 megapixels, so you can crop no problem. But then, like the day of the shoot, I was so going to do it with the R5. And then I looked at my Fujifilm and I was like, hmm, can I just use this little thing, this little guy instead? I, ha I have both. I have the R5 for video and the X100V for photos. Can I get away with just shooting an entire wedding with just the X100V? Wedding photography is very stressful because you have to get the shot the first time. Things happen once, they move on, and you have to kind of move on with the flow. So all I took was the Fujifilm X100V. I had a UV filter in the front. I have a 128 SD card and two batteries, and that's it. It was super light, it fit right in my jacket pocket, and I was holding it the whole time anyway. So during the wedding, I shot the whole thing in RAW, and in Lightroom, I basically selected Classic Chrome as my go-to film simulation at the end for all the photos. I was initially going to only shoot in JPEG, but I thought, you know what, for a wedding, I have to shoot RAW just so I have the most flexibility that I want dynamic range-wise. And it ended up really helping me out because in some shots, I was able to like recover some extra stuff in the shadows that I probably wouldn't have been able to do with the JPEG. But the workflow was just a little bit longer because I shot in RAW, and the files are much, much larger in RAW than JPEG. So my style of photography is mostly documentary style. I don't like to pose people. I don't like to tell someone to please go look this way, please smile like this, please turn your shoulder. That's not my style. I like to be a fly on the wall. I like to be present but not interfere with what's actually happening. I just want to document the day as it unfolds without me having to interfere with it at all. Honestly, the best thing about it was the fact that it was inconspicuous, that it's small. I was able to be a part of the action and also photograph it myself. There was one point where I was holding one of the swords that we were using. You know, we have like six or seven guys holding swords, walking the groom out. And I was holding the sword in my left hand and in my right hand just firing away at everybody around me with their uh, swords and getting the groom walking through. And, you know, these photos, I wouldn't have been able to get them if I was just in the background, like with a far telephoto lens. The fact that I was in the action shooting with a wide lens makes the photos come out so much better because you can see the context, you can see the person reacting in real time. And that's my favorite kind of photography, is this wide angle, full of context look that really tells a story with your image. It's not just about super bokeh and isolating your subject and getting the background to be nothing, but it's really about what's in your photo from corner to corner, having it be full of stuff that all like adds up to this beautiful shot that just contains everything. And having a small camera like that, that was lightweight, that made me like basically just become invisible to the crowd, was such an easy way to get those shots. One reason why I really didn't want to do it with this camera was because of the f2. f2 on a crop sensor is like an f2.8 on a full frame lens. You're not going to blur the background out a ton. You're not going to get that full frame amazing separation between your background. You're going to see a lot of the background with an f2 on a crop sensor camera and that was my main concern with this lens. But Looking back at the photos, I can tell that if I just had like one more stop of light, it would have been so much better. If I just had a 1.4 lens, the pictures would have popped like that much more and made a huge difference. Now, this camera got the job done. Some of these photos look incredible. Um, but if I was to go back and do it again, I probably would have rented like one of the Fujifilm cameras with an f1.4 lens, like a 23 1.4 or something like that, just to get that like extra depth that, you know, would make it look that much more professional. That could just be like my perfectionism seeping in where like I want to get the best photo possible every time, but at the same time you have to like compromise. So you have size and weight on one side and image quality on the other side and it's like which one do you prefer? This camera was like the perfect balance of quality, but also weight and size and inconspicuousness. 
if I was to get like an XT4 with a 24 1.3, you're talking like now you're, it looks like a DSLR. You know, your camera looks like a bigger camera, and now it's not as inconspicuous, and you lose those benefits. So the F2 definitely worked out. Uh, some of these photos like speak for themselves, I think. But if I was to go back, I probably would have rented an XT4 with a 1.4 lens just for like this specific event. Having said that, though, I'm really happy with the results. I mean, the photos looks phenomenal. The colors look amazing. The Fujifilm film simulations are just out of this world and they make me like love to shoot with this thing. The Canon, one of the reasons why I didn't want to take it with me was because it, it just feels like work. You know, when you pick up that camera, you feel like you can get any image possible, but it, the experience of using it, it's just not there. It feels like a very clinical like machine. You know, whereas the Fujifilm, I feel like these cameras have a soul. They just look different. The photos that they come out of them look different. The way you feel when you hold it, the way you feel when you look at the pictures, there's just something there that's just missing for me from using my Canon. Now, the one drawback that I feel like I was thinking about all night that was really a problem for me was the noise. Because this camera only goes to F2, um, my ISO was like way up there. Like, 8,000, 6,400 easy. My ISO was shooting up to 16,500 sometimes and on a crop sensor camera, you can definitely see some noise in the corners. You can definitely see some noise in the images, but it's not a noise that looks bad. Like it definitely is there and I noticed it instantly, but I wasn't so turned off by it that I had to increase my shutter speed and lose some light. However, I feel like this gave the image like character, you know, in a way it made it look like there was some texture there. It wasn't just like grainy, disgusting noise like you get on some of the Sony cameras. So I'm living with it. I'm okay with it. The other annoying thing about it was the reach. Like the, it's only a 35 millimeter equivalent, which is my favorite focal length of all time for anything basically. But there were some times where I was like, man, I wish I had a little bit more reach. Like I wish I could just zoom in a little bit, at least with a 50 millimeter. I didn't want to move so close. I wanted to be in a place where I was in the audience, enjoying the experience while also photographing it. Um, and I guess it's kind of my fault, but sometimes I felt like I wanted a little bit more range than I actually could have gotten. This camera far exceeded my expectations. So far I got it for mostly family photography, so it's documenting my family's everyday life in photo and video. And for that, it's amazing. It's small, it's easy, it's compact, lightweight, good image quality, whatever. But for like a professional wedding case when you cannot miss your shots, this thing, I, I think it over exceeded my expectations here. Like I didn't expect it to perform this well. I feel like the 11 frames per second, the color science, the size, they've really like, they've really made me fall more in love with this camera than I already was in love with it before. And it's, it's hard to say, but this thing is just getting better and better every day. I'm honestly considering just switching fully to the Fujifilm system. So getting rid of my Canon completely and using the, getting an X-T4 or honestly, I think an X-Pro3 because that I feel like fits my personality a lot more than X-T4 with a bunch of Fujifilm lenses because at this point, like that system is just so fun to use, you know? And I also want to just mention that I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this because I have like clients and I want to shoot. No, this is just my personal work. I have a day job that makes me money. And this was more just for fun for me. So maybe if I was like, if I had clients and I had, you know, that kind of stuff and I was doing like the whole photo thing, I would be a different person. I would choose my cameras differently. But because for me, it's just a hobby and I'm trying to have fun and just have a good time with it. And I really personally enjoy this. Um, you know, I'm totally okay just probably switching to Fujifilm, honestly, full on. So yeah, let's go. I think I just made it the decision in my head. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, please subscribe for more Fujifilm stuff and I will see you in the next one. Peace.